Good morning, this is Jeremy from CSI Linux, and I wanted to cover a couple new tools that we've added into the OSINT side. So here we see OSINT and then Sock Puppet Builder. This is going to actually access a few different resources online. You can see it grabbed a, a lot of content related to an individual. Uh, this is all random, made up of content. It's also connecting to this person does not exist.com, pulling a picture from there. Once it's done, we've already built a Sock Puppet dossier template. It rips that apart and then puts all that information into the document. So at this point, you can then save it as a PDF. You can change things, edit content directly from here as well. So this is going to make it to where at least it starts your sock puppet creation. You're going to have to fill out the rest with real information. So accounts that you've created, things in that area. And it's just uh, get your kick started. Now this is a tool that it's not going to be useful for a lot of people, but it's good for training. So if you go into OSINT and then down to FBI Wanted List, this is a tool that's going to connect to the FBI's API. And this is going to be a big database of crimes that need help with the investigation, uh, wanted criminals. It saves all that content into a wanted.txt in the cases folder under the wanted subfolder. See, there's a lot of stuff in here to start working on. Once you close it, it's also going to start downloading the posters. So you can wait for this to complete, and it's going to download a ton of data. Um, you can also stop it after a short time period. But this is going to give you, again, like I mentioned, uh, information related to uh, wanted information by the FBI. This is good for practicing your, your OSINT skills, capabilities, things in that area. Also, trying to help uh, law enforcement track down uh, information they need. So now let's cover another interesting tool. If you go to CSI Linux, OSINT, we're going to look at the OPERT corporate search. So once you open the corporate search, it's going to ask you what case you want to assign it to. And I'm assigning it to case 001. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. That's going to ask for the business. Twitter's in the news, so we're going to look to see if we can find any information on businesses with Twitter in their name. Hit OK. Usually pretty quick, connecting to api.opencorporates.com. And in the background, it popped up that information and then dumped it to a TXT file that's going to be in our cases folder. So here we see until the cases, case 01, and then export. So here we go. Ton of uh, organizations that do have Twitter in the name. But as we mentioned before, it's definitely going to help with uh, open source intelligence uh, investigations and organizations, trying to identify uh, basically when an organization was started, if it's closed, if it was dissolved, when it's things in that area. And it also ties into not just US companies, but uh, companies throughout the world. Now, another thing that we've done is we've been able to tie Hunchly into the case management system. So we're going to go and open up cases. We started content in uh, case 001, so let's go to here. So anything that's going to be in the export folder is going to be useful for autopsy later on. But with Hunchly, this is going to be dumped into the tools folder. So what I'm going to do is open up Hunchly real quick. So we'll do... Um, Brave first, get that kick started, and open up Hunchly. We're going to o import existing uh, CSI Linux case. It's probably going to be renamed to Open Existing Case. Click the case that you want to use, hit OK. And now in the background, it's going to be copying all the content related to Hunchly into the case slash case name slash tools folder into a subfolder called Hunchly. So we're going to take a look at that folder real quick. So we have one that's called Hunchly Data. That means everything that you do right now, if it's going to be going through Hunchly, is stored in this case. That separates that information. Because in the past, if you just use it normally or by default, all your cases are going to be stored together in the same database. At least this makes it to where you can have several subcases in the same main case that you're currently working on. And all that data is going to be sandboxed. It's going to be separate. So when you start a new case or open up a different existing case, all that data that you're going to go through Hunchly at that time is going to be related to that specific case. So again, 
All that content's now sandboxed with Hunchly. And then all you would do at this point would be click on the Hunchly database or the Hunchly icon at the um, top right. If you have the license, you would just put the license in through Upload License and then start your case. So another thing we've added or built into the CSI Linux, uh, CSI Tools section is the ability for autopsy to connect to a case as well. So if you already have a case started or if you're starting a new one, I'll ask that question. But let's say I've already completed an OSINT investigation. The contents is going to be located in my cases folder. The export folder already has some content related to, this is business information, some dark web content, social media stuff. And I want to add that to autopsy to add it to a, a case through there and also allow it for string searching capabilities. So I'm going to import existing CSI Linux case. I'm going to pick the case number itself. In this case, it's case 001. As you see, it's opening up. It's not going to open up normal like it does with the splash screen. What it's doing is it's taking all that content in the export folder and then adding that as a logical disk or a logical evidence item. Once it's adding it, then it's also going to run ingests on it. So depending on how much data you have in there, it may take a little bit more time. It's going through a couple more folders, seeing if there's any data. If there is, it then adds it to the case. If not, it does not add it. So again, this may take a little bit of time, depending on how much data you have in it. But it does save time in the end as well, So instead of having to manually add it yourself. Just checking one more folder. Now it's opening up the content, running the ingest modules. So again, if you do have any other evidence items in here, this just helps it to where it's all uh, tied to the case. The other thing I did want to mention, so again, we have logical file set, content the export folder. We can start doing our string searches things in that area. These are usernames that we looked for. Let's say Elon Musk, um, content at GitHub, looked at a couple user accounts on GitHub. But going back to the ingest, you can do keyword searches. So let's say if you've identified a specific username, Elon Musk, and then tried to scan all of your other images, evidence items within your case, you'd be looking for content there as well. So I'm gonna close this we're going to go back into the case folder and you're going to see that the autopsy has actually saved everything into the tools and autopsy folder. So again, everything in here is going to be sandboxed. Whenever you close a case, it's going to hash everything. Once everything is hashed, Usually you're going to put an archive copy right into the archive folder. So we put a lot more time and effort trying to isolate case by case. So if you are using CSI Linux for multiple cases within that same environment, definitely uh, help separate that information. If you're going to do it the more secure way, you can set up a virtual machine per case. I know quite a few uh, individuals and a few organizations that are doing that as well especially uh, depending on the sensitivity of the evidence of the data. But going back to if you're doing multiple cases within one environment, we're doing as much as we can to isolate the information. So there's no uh, leakage and there's no contamination of evidence. As always, if you have any comments or questions or any uh, options for improvement, please let us know. You can contact us at support at CSILinux.com.